right, welcome to the Ken's Talk Weekly Payroll Sprap in Excel. It's for Eagle Displays. They're located in Pennsylvania. They make displays for jewelry stores and other places. Uh, Rick Rhodes is a great guy, and he is working with the Excel Payroll Sprap. And what we're going to show you is how the weekly Sprap works, and how you can have all your payroll and reports and pay stubs and everything all in Excel, all under your own control. Uh, what I've entered in here, you're looking at the Employee Info Master Sheet right here. This is going to show you all your employee master information, just everything you need to record when you're entering in a new employee. First thing you want to do, how many W-4 allowances do they have? You've got the W-4 federal form. I put one here. Is the person married? Yes or no? And all these little arrows will give you your drop down menus. You can choose what you need. State exemptions are zero because it doesn't come into play because we're working for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is where all these employees are for this template that we're looking at. I entered in my last name and first name and a fake social security number and the max of 16,500 401k. It's basic information. You could go and you can see that you're looking at employee one is uh, all this information here. Employee two, you'd start entering a new one and go down the line and fill in your information. This is for a weekly payroll, which means uh, in this one it, it ends on uh, Saturday. It goes from Sunday to Saturday every week. So we put in the first date of the first week ending of 2011. This is 2011 payroll sprap, and it's Saturday, January 1st. All the other days get populated. And now we have a timesheet tab in this sheet, which is going to be daily timesheet records. For example, today, Labor Day, September 5th, let's enter in hours for all the employees. There's really only going to be one in September 5th. You click this filter under date. It's going to show all the possible dates that you have down here. You're going to want to scroll down to September. This is after you've deselected all. I just deselected all so that we're only going to be selecting a small sliver of this to look at. We're opening up September and we're going to look at December 5th because that's what today is. And we're opening that up and you see that there's employee Ken Braverman and a bunch of blank employees. These blank employees are representative of the potential employees that you could have entered into your employee master sheet. This Excel application will handle up to 10 employees. Uh, if you had put names in there, then they would have shown up right here. Monday, September 5th, how many hours did I work? I don't know. Let's go with the big fat eight. Let's go with the full day. What did I work on? You have the option of writing in the description here. Say payroll template or something like that. That would give you an idea of what you worked on. Notice that over here, there's a week ending column which automatically populates itself. It's connected to days. It understands what week ending the day is related to. So Monday, September 5th ends on, that's a Saturday, I'm sure, Saturday, September 10th. Okay, so we've entered in this day. If you wanted to enter in another day, you would just simply go here and open up September and say, I also want to look at, I don't know, the 4th. Maybe I need to go back and enter in days from yesterday. Oh, September 4th, how many hours did I work? Maybe I worked six on nothing, whatever I did. You have the ability to do that. And this is how you show everything again once you, if you want to. Okay, so we've just entered in hours for Ken Braverman for those two days. Now what we can do is take a look at our hour sheet, which has more detailed information about the payroll week ending, which is really going to relate to the pay check and pay stub that you're going to have at the end of the week. Let's prune this down. This is going to show, if you look at how big this is, this is going to show all employees. It's pretty big. All employees and all possible payroll periods. It's all there on the left. So we dig deep in. We say, all right, let's look for just the payroll period ending September 10th because that's the paycheck we're on. So we click date, we deselect all, and then we go into September and we're just looking for September 10th. So we clicked on it and here we go. You've got all your employees that were working uh, during the week of September 10th or even not working. I got a total of 14 hours which is going to be 8 plus the 6 that I had put on the other timesheet to say this is automatic right here. You're able to then enter in other specific information that would be related to the pay stub or paycheck for this period. Does this person have any additional federal tax withheld from their paycheck? I'm going to say no. Uh, what's their hourly rate? Um, let's say $25 an hour. Did they get a commission during this period? Maybe I did a great job. I got 100 bucks commission this period. Do I have a 401k percentage, meaning what percentage of my gross salary goes to a retirement plan, let's say 3%, you can type it as 0 .03 or as just 3, it reads it as a percentage, either way it'll take it properly. Reimbursements, did I, 
do anything that required a reimbursement, travel, food, who knows, whatever it was, you could say maybe 10 bucks, I don't know. Uh, I was going to add a column in there for a description of the reimbursement, but maybe we can work that into the timesheet if you really want to. Either way, uh, so that's just entering in your core information. Once this is done, what you've got is you've got, a, you know, you're ready for your pay stub. You've entered in everything you need to enter to generate a pay stub. Those are on the stubs tab right here. And we've already had this set. Let's actually blank this out to show you how this works. But you've got your pay period ending choice. So you, if you click in this blue cell and click this arrow, we're looking at the pay period ending 9, 10. That's the one we're messing with. Okay. And the employee is going to show you all your possible employees. There's really only one with a name because we've only started working with one. That's me. Here's your paycheck. It's going to be $25 an hour. Period ending 9, 10. 14 hours in the period. There's $10 in reimbursement. Commission's 100 bucks. Your gross wages, your commission uh, plus your hours times your rate. Uh, this is what went to 401k. This is your taxable gross, your federal tax, FICA, Medicare, state of Pennsylvania tax, and Pennsylvania employment withholding. And this is your net check. It would be 379 bucks out of a possible, what is that, 450 plus your 10 reimbursement, right? Possible 460, you get 379. Not too bad. Uh, and this will show all your year to date numbers over here. So if you change your period, for example, if you go to the next period, the week ending 917, you'll see the current hours on the left are going to go blank, and then the year to date stuff on the right is going to keep all the year to date information right over there. So that's pretty cool. And we'll go back to 910. So that's right. So there's a pay stub. If you want to see a different employee, you just go down here, and whenever you entered in a new employee, they would appear right there. So you'd be able to just add them right in. Yep get that little arrow back okay so now you also have your reports that you need to uh, file as an employer they're on your reports tab and there's a few different reports there's a, a 941 which is your federal tax and FICA and all that stuff all the taxes you gotta report to the feds there's your state tax reports there's your 401k report and also a state unemployment report in order to get these things updated once you've entered in information you do need to do something, and that is you need to click inside here anywhere, inside the table, right click and choose refresh. Once you do that, things are going to refresh and you're going to have your reports as you want them. So this one here, 941, shows gross wages, taxable wages, FICA wage base, federal tax withheld, all these things, and eventually accumula uh, accumulates into a uh, total 941 tax due. You can fix some formatting on here. I'm going to wrap text. And then that will allow you to shrink these cells a little bit. It's supposed to allow you to do that. Let's try that again. Wrap. We did wrap, didn't we? Yeah. All right. What's going on here? Yeah, that's better. Pull these things in so that they'll fit on a piece of paper nicely for you. And that's your 941 tax. So this, the way you can uh, filter this and see the periods you want is up here you've got you can filter by quarter if you need to file this by quarter by clicking on this let's show all quarters right now by doing that or you can just look at one specific week period if you wanted to you know by just clicking here and choosing the period that you want so that's your 941 report here is your state tax report same idea with the filters up top choose your date or your quarter or both if you want to but better to do just one uh, this is the state of Pennsylvania uh, employees in the state of Pennsylvania are Ken Braverman. This is the kind of state tax that I know based on that one, uh, one you know, 14 hour, two day period there. This is your 401k report. Shows the average percentage that the B employee withholds and the amount that needs to go to 401k. Let's make that a little nicer. You can sort that by date or filter it by date so you can see how much you owe during any given period of time. And here's your state unemployment. This is a total UI tax that would be due, and then this is also the employee withholding portion over to the right. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that, whether we're going to bring that into a separate report or how that's reported. I'll have to ask the owner of Pencil of uh, Eagle Displays to figure that out. But those are your main reports, and this is fully functional. It's working pretty good. So that is running payroll in the state of Pennsylvania, 2011, current rates, and all reports. That's your Ken's Talk Scrap. Enjoy.